Hi, my name is Akinwale Akindia. You are welcome to my channel. I want to speak on IT balance poker. Uh, as I continue, please, I want you to press the subscribe button so that uh, you can be able to get uh, more uh, videos uh, from me. So let's start with IT Balance Scorecard. IT Balance Scorecard was developed by two professors, uh, Professor Robert Kaplan and Professor David Norton. And uh, the idea they brought was that uh, finance is not enough to measure the performance of a business. Number one, finance is historical. So it's giving us information about the performance of the company in the past. And uh, that might not be enough to give us reliable information about the future of the business. Okay, so that's why they came up with a performance measurement that is balanced. So that's actually the uh, origin of that balance pattern. So we have a, a measurement system that is balanced not like we have balanced diets, you eat uh, no protein, carbohydrates, vitamins, fat and oil and the rest. So the same thing with this performance measurement uh, system, it is uh, comprehensive. So instead of just looking at performance of uh, the finances of the organization, we, we look at four areas. We look at the financial perspectives, we look at the internal process perspective, we look at the customer perspective, we look at the learning, and growth uh, uh, perspective. So the idea is that uh, when we are looking at a financial perspective, for example, we want to look at uh, uh, how the business is doing uh, financially. So we look at uh, things like a profit, return on investment, uh, size of the balance sheets, and so on, which is uh, basically the traditional way to measure performance of a business. Okay, then we look at the internal process perspective if you come inside the organization, we want to see uh, how smooth code and code operations are, okay? So you, you want to see uh, the, the effectiveness in the system, you want to see the uh, efficiency in the system. So when we're talking about effectiveness, we want to know whether processes are achieving uh, their objective. So uh, bringing the capability maturity model uh, we fit in here in internal process perspective. So you want to measure the cap cap capability of the processes in that organization. You want to determine the efficiency. Efficiency has to do with uh, the, uh, the, whether there are wastages. So the system is achieving its objective, but at what cost? Okay, can we, is it possible to do, to achieve what we are achieving at a lower cost? So is it possible to reduce the time spent uh, for, you know, in, a, in, in running the process? So those are the things that the internal process, process perspective will focus on. So we want to look at the processes in that organization, whether it is seamless, whether there is uh, uh, room for improvement. So business process uh, re-engineering can uh, be the result of the uh, assessing or reviewing the internal process uh, of an organization. So there could be a lot of manual uh, labor which we can automate. Okay, there could be a lot of uh, works, rejects in the system which we can improve upon. So the business might be making money in terms of revenue or profit, but there may be uh, room, room for improvement in the way things are processed in that organization. Then we have customer perspective. The customer perspective. Uh, has to do with uh, whether the customers are happy with the organization. Uh, like I always say in training, that uh, your customers may be coming because they don't have a choice. Okay, so talking of monopolistic system, talking of uh, oligopoly system. So because there are few suppliers or there is only one supplier, they are coming. But the moment the system, you know, is open up and you have more players in that sector, you may discover that all your customers they move away to the uh, the next available competitor. So it's very important that you gauge the uh, satisfaction of your customers with you. The learning and growth perspective uh, has to do with how happy uh, people are in the organization. So customer perspective will be focusing on external customers. The learning and growth is focusing on your internal customers. So uh, are people growing in, in the organization? There are some people that stay in the company for a 
long years, not because uh, the salary was great, but because they are growing. Okay, there is room for, you can be in uh, Africa today, next time you are in Asia, another time you are in Europe, okay, then uh, if you can move across departments, across sectors, divisions in the organization, and that can be motivating for some people. The promotion, you know, are guaranteed and things like that. So, learning and growth has to do with your human resources, the growth of the people, the capacity development of the people. Are there innovations? Okay, are people bringing innovations that can help the business? Why is it that some businesses, you know, they've been around for 100 years, 150 years, and they, they, they move, they adapt with every generation, all right? Coca Cola has been there for so long, so long, all right? And they are adapting to every generation uh, that they find the, the themselves with. So that is talking about the innovation that the business is able to bring. Uh, to its operation. So we are looking at the, the level of training given to the people, the software issue. For example, now look at Microsoft. Okay, they are very good in this learning and growth perspective in terms of the version of software. So you have you have in the seven, you have in the eight, you have in the ten, you have in the SP. So you can see in learning and growth, they, are, they keep on bringing innovation. Okay, the same thing with the uh, Microsoft uh, Office suite. So you can see various version of uh, the same product. So that is the focus of the uh, learning and growth. Now, basically, in this perspective, are uh, basically to measure the performance of the organization of the business. The original uh, version of the balance paper, you know, as a, uh, a business orientation. Then uh, some guys later came along the line and adapted it to IT. Okay, this is so good that we can actually adapt it to virtually anything. Any aspect of the business, we can adapt it to IT, or we can adapt it to uh, logistics and so on. So we, some guys came around and they adapted uh, the balance profits to IT. So they now came up with a business contribution. So instead of the financial perspective, we have business contribution because uh, in many organizations, IT is internal, and you may not be expected to, to bring money to the organization because they are actually servicing uh, internal customers. So you may not be able to give IT and say, okay, this is how much IT has brought in terms of naira or dollar or yen value. But we must be able to track the value that IT has been able to add to the business, maybe in terms of cost saving. Maybe in terms of uh, in terms of uh, time saving, so I have they been able to support the business groups in helping the business group to uh, achieve their you know, internal objectives. So maybe because before IT brought an innovation, uh, this is the, the this particular business group group was contributing uh, less one point five million dollars. Then after IT um, brought an innovation and implemented a particular software. Uh, you know, the revenue jumped from half and five million to six million dollars. So that is clear. You can see clearly the business contribution. So we need to be able to track the uh, contribution of IT to the business. Then um, we see how the customer orientation. So the customer perspective, all right, uh, we adapt it to the customer orientation. So uh, in, in cases whereby you have IT not actually interfacing with personal customers, uh, they are interfacing with internal customers, so the users, the end users. So you also want to track whether the end users are happy. So there should be internal service level agreement or SLA with the user groups, so that we'll be able to look at the metrics of the SLA and determine whether the uh, IT is meeting those uh, metrics or not. So we can do some satisfaction survey uh, to be able to track the happiness or the satisfaction of internal and external users with IT. Then operational excellence, uh, that is uh, from the internal process uh, perspective. So that is talking about the effectiveness of operations in IT, efficiency of operations in IT. Then uh, the learning and growth perspective is uh, adapted to future orientation. So, uh, that's talking about innovations. 
So IT should be able to bring up innovation that will project the business into the next 10 years, the next 15 years, the next 20, 30 years. So IT should be able to keep the business in shape in terms of agility, in terms of adaptability. Okay, so they should be able to bring ideas, innovation, technological products, technological services, technological platforms that will be able to give the business an edge into the future. So, and it's very, very important, like I said, that all these four perspectives must be aligned with the business objective. So when we want to look at business contribution, we want to track how IT has been able to add value to the business objective, uh, customer orientation, how IT has been able to support the customers, you know, the internal users uh, to be able to meet business objective. And if IT is interfacing with external users, we need to be able to see how that has added to the business objective. Operational excellence, how has operational uh, effectiveness and uh, efficiency in IT uh, being able to contribute to the business objective? The future orientation, that is very clear. The innovations in IT, the training of IT personnel, how has that been able to add value to the business objective of the organization? Okay, then keep key performance indicators are very important in balance quarter, in IT balance quarter. Yeah, it is what is measured that gets done. So if you say we are giving a goals to IT, uh, we need to be able to have measures to track whether those goals are achieved or not. So that's why we for every of for each of the perspective, we need to be able to have key performance indicators. For example, financial perspective, we can use profits. What profit are the company made and or what profit has IT be able to add to the to the pool of the organization, ROI, return on investment, total assets, revenue. So all these are financial indicators that we can use to determine how well the business is doing financially. The internal process perspective, we can look at capacity utilization, right? Uh, I remember that was the time I went for an audit. And one of the things that I discovered when I was doing the application review was that uh, you know, the, the customers are complaining that uh, you know, when they log in to the application, the system will give them an error message that the maximum number of users exceeded. So which means IT has failed in that area, okay, because they were not tracking the number of users uh, that, are, that obviously was increasing beyond the licensee that they, they, they got for that particular application. So that is an internal process uh, issue that we actually affect in a customer perspective also. So capital, uh, capacity utilization could uh, be a KPI, matching downtime or system downtime can be a KPI. Audit rating can be a KPI. So when auditors can, how do they rate uh, IT operation? That will help us to know whether we are doing well or not. Uh, equipment maintenance schedule. So are they do uh, maintaining as per the uh, vendor's recommendation? Okay, I also want to look at uh, scheduled maintenance. If it is increasing, then you know that that's a pointer that there's a problem. Maybe the assets, the other equipment are getting old. Okay, number of rejects in production, mean time to repair. Okay, when the system is down, how long will it take IT to bring it up again? Stock out. Okay, you have workers ready to work, there are no raw materials, there are no inventory. So, all these are pointers to whether, I, whether the business is doing well when it comes to internal process uh, perspective or not. Okay, then we have customer perspective, uh, which will give us indicators on whether customers are happy. For example, average time for resolution. How long does it take IT? For the business to achieve uh, certain uh, goals or to resolve certain problems. Uh, first, contact resolution rate. For example, if you call help desk, if somebody calls help desk, how many of those calls are resolved while the customer is still holding on? Okay, hold on, just give me a second. All that is a sign of capacity and in determining whether people will be happy internally or externally. Customer retention rates, okay, can also be an indicator of customers' uh, happiness with the business, number of the work, SLA, service level agreement requirements that are met, they are not met, will also be a pointer in your customer perspective. Other accuracy, so somebody said I need three uh, 
number of people and so they the same part. Okay, that can create problem, customer complaints. Okay, all this can be you know, used as customer perspective indicators. The learning and growth, we want to see turnover in the organization. If turnover is high, then there's a problem. Okay, number of training done. Okay, so number of training, so you want to see people being trained, departments going and training, you want to see the training plan, you want to see that the training plan is adhered to, this will be an indicator of learning and growth. Not versions of software. I gave example of Microsoft today. Yeah? So if you have a version of software, uh, a version of software uh, developed in 2000 and uh, maybe 2010, and uh, in 2020, it is the same version that people are still using, then you know that learning and growth is poor. So you want to track the number of versions of the uh, software being used. Then it's very, very important evaluation. It's very, very important when we are talking about balance factor. The same balance factor is a performance measurement tool. So it, it can be used to appraise individuals. For example, you can give financial to, to, to an employee, you can give an internal process to, to an employee, you can give a customer perspective to learning and growth uh, perspective to an employee. Day. That is the beginning of the year. At the end of the financial year, they can use that to, to uh, appraise that individual. I've seen it done uh, in, in, in an organization in Nigeria, okay? And uh, we can also use it to, to review to our place IT as a department. So goals will be given to IT that are aligned with the business goal. So IT is to achieve good goals so that the business can achieve the ultimate uh, goals or objectives uh, for the year. So at the end of the day, at the end of the year, or possibly, all right, we can evaluate how IT is uh, meeting those uh, goals. So the balance of that is very, very important in strategy, implementation, in uh, governance of enterprise IT. Uh, it's very, very it's an important tool that can be used to align IT with business and to also uh, measure the performance of contribution of IT.